what's up everybody this is michael powers of indiana desolate coming to you live hope you like that intro there and uh be sure and stick around for the outro as well that song will be on the new album um that's just a section of the song uh um uh let's do the shout outs here want to shout out to all the fans friends and family of indiana desolate what's up you guys hope you everyone is doing well hope everyone had a great labor day holiday uh i did uh as little as possible kind of just sat around and chilled out uh kind of laid low this weekend didn't really accomplish much uh you know on my days off from work i kind of just chill out and I'm kind of a homebody, especially with this pandemic. So I kind of just uh, stayed around the house and, you know, just uh, did my thing. Uh, I want to give a shout out to Joe Eskel Roset. Hope all is well, buddy. There's a horns for you, bro. Hope all is well, Joe. And also a shout out to G G Gene Bass, Gene Lou Tadell. Hope you are doing well, Gene. And shout out to Maddie as well, brother. Hope you are doing well. Hope everyone is well. Hope everybody had a great Labor Day holiday. Um, nothing new to report. Uh, we're kind of taking our time with this album. Uh, um, I know Joe wants to. Uh, he wants to mix everything uh, to where everything is. Tight as a squirrel's ass, I guess, if you will, as he once put it in a conversation he and I had. Uh, kind of funny. Uh, you know, so uh, he wants to make sure everything is right on point with this album because of the first album of ours, Anarchy in America. Uh, um, when we did the song... And I've been listening to the album as he did the first few mixes of it. And he got me copies of the songs so far that we have done. And I listened to it on different devices and stuff like that. So um, I gave him feedback on that. And I said, you know, this one sounds the best. You know, so what he's trying to do is he's trying to go back, remix everything, and trying to get everything lined up with those specifications of that song because that one sounded really awesome uh the production on it sounds really good it sounds professional uh so and and you can tell from the other mixes that he sent me that uh, that one had uh the best sound uh, it really came through nice and you know, you didn't have to adjust the volume or anything. In fact, you probably had to turn it down because it sounded that good. So I'm, I'm really happy with the way that song turned out. And I let him know that, hey, you know, this one, this one sound, by far sounds the best. So he's, he's going to be working on that. Uh, you know, um, things are kind of, we're kind of, like I said, we're kind of in the slow phase of it. The, the slow, slower crawl like a snail phase of it uh you know uh he's he's kind of in top secret mode about the song he's been working on with this song for the album this is his puppy so i'm gonna let him roll with it he did give me a sample acoustic guitar um sample that sounded beautiful uh, of him on the acoustic guitar so He's going to somehow try to incorporate that in the song. And if he does, man, it's going to be outstanding. So I'm hoping that Joe, Joe is a tremendous musician. He's fabulous at what he does, man. He is excellent, excellent musician. So I have no doubt that it's going to be quality from Joe. And Joe is really hard on himself, too. He's, sometimes he's too hard on himself. But he's, he's, he wants that little, every little nuance down to perfection. So that's good in a lot of ways so we're hoping for the best for, for joe that he will put forth a great effort which i know he will on this song then we got to send it over to gene bass so still a lot to go and then we got to have madia sing it uh 
I'm not sure about the lyrics. Um, uh, Joe's kind of up in the air about it, it looks like, from what I understand. Uh, he asked me if I had some lyrics uh, for it. I said, I've got to hear it first. I've got to hear it, and then, because what I do is I, I pin all the lyrics I have, and I put them on my laptop for safekeeping, and I kind of, if I hear a song, I kind of go through and see what I'll do first, though, is I'll, I'll, I'll listen to it, and I'll get the melody of it in my mind, and in my heart, and in my head, and I'll see if I can come up with something original for it. Uh, that's the first thing I'm going to do when he gets the song to me, is see if we can come up with something, you know, original, fresh, new, right, hot off the press, if you will, for it. Uh, uh, then what I I might do is if I can't think of anything and he can't come up with anything then what I'll do is I'll go into my inventory of uh, pen songs and see if anything sort of sparks you know a resemblance of lining up with the the way the song goes I told him I said I've got to hear it first so I gotta I gotta get the feel of it get the vibe of it see if it matches anything I've pinned uh, any of the emotions that stir up in me uh, with the music he makes so we're gonna see it's it's, it's gonna be good I know it is uh, Joe Joe don't produce no garbage Joe produces excellent stuff so uh, I have no doubt that it's gonna be awesome uh, he's gotta do uh, I know he's got to do some drum work on one of the tracks that was already already written already uh, almost done but he listened to it again and the timing was a bit off on the drum so he's got to do that um, so there's still a lot to go um, you know still a lot lot to go um, you know it was uh, you know uh, uh, then then uh, I think I've been losing a little more weight lately uh, I'll find out tomorrow as I go to the doctor and uh, as far as my diet goes I've been more on, on a liquid diet uh, I've been drinking soda but it's been lower calorie soda mostly uh, I got back on my tea a more water-based substance uh, I, I've been drinking a little bit of Pepsi I, I switched from coke to Pepsi which I think is I think Pepsi is kind of easier on the stomach uh, so I do, I have been drinking a little bit more Pepsi, but I I tend to only drink Pepsi when I'm kind of hurt hurting on cash, you know. So it's uh I drink the cheaper cola when I'm when I'm hurting on cash. I, I drink like Fago and stuff like that, which to me is a lower calorie soda. It's you know um and, and like I said, I like I, I it's funny because I I, I love the uh, the brisk sweet tea and it's funny because I thought of a funny nickname for it because I, I, I like it so much I I I call it the nectar of the gods so <laughs> hopefully it'll catch on that'd be kind of cool they could make a cool commercial of it I think it'd be kind of catchy you know let me drink my nectar of the gods here you know so I think that'd be a good you know slogan for brisk to use you know which I think Brisk is a product of uh, Pepsi, so there you go, Brisk. So um, you know, I just thought it was kind of funny, you know, nectar of the gods. Uh, you know, um, so uh, haven't really begun writing for the third album or rehearsing for the third album yet. I kind of wanna, I want to finish this album up. Uh, then basically go into the next album with a fresh new start uh you know i i i don't want to put the cart before the horse basically i i i mean i can write riffs any day of the week you know i can create stuff but you know it's it's i want to sort of do what i did with this album because this album as far as I'm concerned has has gone really well I think for me uh, personally it's gone really well uh, re rehearsing the songs getting the songs nailed down 
It was a little bit tricky at first, but uh, they came together sort of in a hurry and um, you know, I I don't know how I feel about that. I, I kind of I don't want my songwriting to be an exact science, I guess. Because uh, then you sort of get in the habit and it becomes more like a job, maybe. Uh, I want to kind of base it on how I feel uh, because that way more emotion goes into the plane of the, of the riffs I write. Uh, more of the heart and soul goes into it rather than just, you know, oh, you know, I'm doing this for a job, you know, so I, I don't want to ever look at it that way. I hope I don't have to, um, but, um, you know, I know, uh, you know, um, and, and it was cool today. I had on my, as I got on now, I got my, uh, uh, my uh, Megadeth Rust in Peace t-shirt on today, and I was at the store today. And uh, I was taking back some bottles, and, and uh, funny story, a guy uh, comes up and he goes, nice shirt, man, I really love Drew Rust in Peace, and I gave him the horns, you know, I was like, what's up, man, keep rocking, you know, and he just, he just kind of went, Woo! and I started laughing, I, it was just real funny, you know, and so, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed that little 30 seconds there that was pretty cool you know i i do get a lot of comments when i wear my megadeth shirts so that's cool uh i've had one person ask me about uh um the indiana desolate shirts i wear uh i got a couple i got our album cover from the first album in our uh unfinished album cover for the second album uh nothing sacred remains and i already had a shirt made up of that but um and they're not cheap so i like i like sporting them I, I i'm very proud of what you know all the musicians and and and, and people who have helped put out have you know I'm, I'm very proud of the music we've made so far uh, I'm not going to be ashamed at all of the music we made at one bit because it's, you know, a lot of heart, soul, and energy and effort went into that music, and so I'm not going to dare be ashamed of that. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's you know, it's it's one of those deals, you know. I, I, I like wearing the shirts, you know, I do. Uh, I hope you know one day we can be as successful as Megadeth. I hope. I uh, hope, you know, people recognize the name Indiana Desolate, kind of like Megadeth, you know. One could only hope, you know. Uh, you know, a person can dream big, but uh, as the CEO of Indiana Desolate, I also got to remain in reality as well. And so, uh, Joe always, you know, as co-founder, Joe always says, hey, you know, let's keep our head, you know. On level ground here not always in the clouds so he's he's definitely good for for reminding me of that and uh, I think we kind of balance each other out in a good way you know it's kind of like uh, Jack Black and Kyle Gass kind of you know uh, one can't exist without the other I think that's the way me and Joe kind of are it's like you know uh, like I said man if I'm the hard Indian of desolate he's a soul so you know, um, you know, and I, I truly feel that way. You know that he he took a chance when he first heard me. I, I put a little song, four little riffs, four or five little riffs together on Compose.com, and he heard it, and he took a chance, and he took a leap of faith, and you know, I'm I'm so grateful. Always will be grateful for Joe taking the time to take that leap of faith and reach out to me. And I'm certainly glad that I got to know Joe and, and, and Gene Bass as well. You know, and, and all the musicians that have helped pave the paved the path that we've you know been on. You know, we we uh, it's been a roller coaster ride, you know, but 
well worth it you know well worth the price of admission you know so uh you know so um but other than that you know um uh, i've been broke <laughs> you know this uh you know this uh pandemic it's been one thing after another man it's it's been rough you know i had to get my car fixed so i had to get some repairs done in my car because the brakes were real bad on it and stuff like that and had to get that fixed so that cost a, quite a bit of money and been paying the repairs off so lucky a, a shop here in town let me make payments so and because I work in the auto industry, kind of, I kind of know the ins and outs of the shops I deliver to. So I was lucky and real fortunate uh, to have a good employer that let me make payments on the stuff. So that was really cool. But it's still, it's still, it's still tough to make ends meet, you know. It's not easy out here, you know. And I feel, I feel really bad for the people that, you know, are struggling, that can't make ends meet with the rent and the you know the consumer bill and you know all that stuff so it's it seems like the US economy is getting worse too it's just I hope it gets better soon I really do you know with this COVID-19 stuff it's really rough you guys I hope that you guys are hanging in there hanging on there and hopefully we can somehow you know with this album give you guys a little bit of hope if we ever get the thing released hopefully but you know um you know just you gotta kind of pull yourself up by the bootstraps i guess if you will and, and soldier on you know and it gets tough you know it gets really it gets really hard out there and you know and got to trudge through the mud if you want to get to the beach and that's, that's kind of one of my sayings you know so I don't know you know so um, but other than that uh, like I said uh, I'll find out uh, you know if I've lost any more weight tomorrow I hope I have uh, like like I said I'd like to lose quite a bit more uh, I'd like to get down to about uh, 250 I hope so, because that's, that's like my old high school weight, and I would love to be down to that. That'd be really awesome, so I'm hoping so. But the way, <laughs> the way my finances are going, it won't be hard. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, it's, it's, it's so expensive now to cook. It's like uh, making a meal, you know, costs a mountain. You know, if I make spaghetti nowadays, it's like 30 bucks, you know, so, and it's like, you know, so you go to McDonald's, you spend under five bucks, you know, so it's like, you know, and you save a lot of money going to McDonald's. I mean, it's not the healthiest, but, you know, I eat maybe at the most twice a day, and the rest of the time I drink low-calorie soda, so, or tea, so... It's probably a success. It's probably a, a, a recipe for success. You know, if I if I keep doing that, I hope. And during the week, it's a little bit more difficult. But uh, you know, when I'm at work, I, I I'll instead of buying the individual sodas, I'll get a uh, two liter and I'll just refill the bottle I'm using. So I'll save a little bit of money that way. So I'm, I'm trying to budget a little bit better and save my nickels and pennies you know no pun intended but uh um looking forward to uh dave mustaine's new autobiography that comes out i think in a couple of days the new rust in peace autobiography so that's going to be really good uh i pre-ordered the audio book so that should be really good uh also, Seven Dust new album, Blood and Stone. That's coming out, I think, October 23rd. So that should be a really good album. They, they uh, recorded that new album. So that should be really good. Still waiting to hear an update on the Megadeth's 16th studio album. I, I can't wait to hear that, man. That's going to be 
Uh, as far as I know, there's a song with the word Chernobyl in there that I've heard. It's fast as hell, and so I can't wait to hear that. Uh, it's going to be awesome. I know it will be. Uh, Megadeth is one of the baddest in the business, so it's going to be awesome. I just can't wait. Uh, getting excited to hear about that. So uh, a lot going on in the metal. Uh, I think I think I read on Facebook Disturb might be having some new music come out pretty soon too. I think. Not sure, but they're a badass band as well. So, a lot going on, man. A lot going on. Um, wanted to ask you guys also, how do you feel about the, 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 uh, I guess they're like drive, drive in theater concerts? I don't like the idea myself. I just, I think it takes away from the whole excitement of seeing an actual band live. Um, I mean, it is what it is if you're down for that I guess that's your thing I mean I can I can see it in a way it's a lot more comfortable because the indoor concerts during the summer especially and even the winter like the indoor concerts can be really really uh, really hot and humid and uh, it's, it's not not real fun sometimes especially if you're near the pit or you know or in the pit um, it's not real fun you know so it's real hot and humid and so I guess I could see you know a drive-in concert you know live concert but you know where you watch them on video at a remote location I, I, I guess it might be okay I'm not sure you know I mean it just you know, I don't know. I don't know how I, how I feel about that yet. But I guess like Seven Dust is doing a live concert. Other bands are have started doing those live concerts. Uh, I don't know. You know I, I'm kind of up in the air about it right now. But uh, as far as the album goes, uh, you know, uh, kind of waiting you know I'm, I'm trying to be patient uh, you know uh, our first album I kind of I, I jumped the gun on releasing that album uh, I'm not on this one I'm trying to stay more patient uh, more relaxed more chill about it uh, I'm anxious but yet I want quality to be put out there uh, I don't want to just rush it this time like I did the first album I, I you know I I did I, I I remember when anarchy we had you know seven total songs and I said you know what Joe I'm sick of it I'm gonna release it you know and, and, and he's like well hang on you know let me let me master the songs as best as I can and and then then release it you know and so as soon as we had our, 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 so to speak, feet wet, after that was released, I said, okay, you know, I said, now we, we've kind of got somewhat of a establishment out there. I said, now we're going to, we're going to kind of take our time with this one. And, and so far, that's what we've done, you know, and, and, and so far we're pleased with what we've come up with. Uh, it's, 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 like I said, it's a lot better. I... I think you guys will agree. I hope so. You know, I've, I've uh, you know, I've let a few people hear samples. Um, you know, uh, so far one out of two reviews from the people that have heard. Uh, it's kind of 50-50. One person was an older classic rock fan, so I don't really count that as a metal fan. Uh, you know review but the other one was it's badass so the w one review was really good the other review was like well this singer I don't like this singer because this person is a classic rock fan they like bands like Journey and and you know stuff like that so they like the more uh, not as aggressive singing uh, goes and 
our new singer really comes forth on the album. He really brings it. He, he brings the energy and the attitude we want. And we feel these songs need because they're heavy. You know, um, and I, I've had other people hear our first album and said, man, you guys can bring it. And that's what we want. You know, we, we, you know, we're not, you know, we're not this, you know, Care Bear type like song. We're, we're, you know, this thing, we are the world, man. We're, we're kind of being realistic about how stuff is out here. You know what I mean? And so it's like, you know, not everything's going to be flower fields. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, we're going to be mutilating some Care Bears and, napalming some care bears and you know i'm not i mean not not saying that everything has to be about death and destruction not at all but a lot of people need to open up their eyes to what's really going on out here in society and the world around us you know with, with bombs dropping in cities and, and stuff like that you know it's just a lot you know and a lot of people are saying these are the end days well you know, <laughs> your loving God, Jesus said, in the last days, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. So even your loving God, supposed Christians, said it's going to be rough as hell in the last days. So there you go. That's coming from Jesus' mouth. So there you have it. So, you know, and, 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 and honestly... And I've told people this. I said, if you're going to step foot in the heavy metal industry and you release an album where you're talking about pink, fluffy Care Bears and flowery fields, when you step out on tour, you're probably going to get your freaking ass kicked, dude. And, and so you got to at least, you know, and... and, and and you know it's like and I kind of I kind of agree with this analogy because it's like and and I don't want to piss off too many people when I say this but in a way I'm not for female lead vocalists in a way and here's why is because if you're a front man of a band a heavy metal band they are going to focus on what you say. The media is going to focus on the shit you say when you comment about subjects. And if you can't fight at all, and you can't back up your words with your actions, and you can't throw down when the time comes and kick some ass when it's time to get down and dirty, then you're going to be in a lot of world of hurt. Not saying that female lead vocalists can't fight, but nine times out of ten, if you're a female lead vocalist and you start shit with someone around you or a fan in the crowd, chances are there's going to be a guy who wants to be gentleman and oh, how dare you hit a lady? You know, he's going to want to be the hero and step up and fight her battles for her. Why fight her battles for her when she started this shit? You know what I mean? You need to be able to back up what the fuck you said. And if you can't, then don't say it. Don't be a front man. So, I've always been kind of against uh, female lead vocalists um, for that reason. Because you need to be able to back the fuck up what you say. And if you're a wussy, little scrawny, you know... A buck five person that can't fight at all you better be careful <laughs> so you know it's just like heavy metal is rough dude heavy metal don't pull no punches so it's not like we can come in here as soft as kittens you know what I mean and cute and cuddly like a you know people need to get realistic about heavy metal music it's not for the squeamish it's not for the wussies. Some real shit. So, you know, it's just, it's just, I, and I, I, I wanted to throw that out there. You know, not saying women can't fight, not even saying that at all. It's just a reality that if you're a front person for a band, 
you better you better be able to back up what you say and, and that's just how it is in the industry that's just always how it's been you know you better be able to throw down when the time comes to throw down you know not this pussy footing around pop prima donna shit oh I might break a nail no fuck that you better be able to throw down with the best of them so it is what it is you know and so you know just my personal opinion it is what it is you disagree that's fine that's your personal opinion but you know take it for what it is you know I think my personal perspective and my personal opinion makes more sense it's more realistic <laughs> but that's again my opinion so yeah um, but uh, you know so and it's just like uh, you know cuz and, and me and Joe talked about this because he said you know and he said uh, you know and uh, I, I asked him I said I said I to me we we have a sound I, I, I don't know what you guys think uh, I think Indiana Desolate has a sound and, and Joe Joe steam uh, Joe stands on the side of the the opinion that Indiana Desolate sound is me and I said it can be you as well I said just take your guitar and use the presets I use and you know, and I don't I don't know if he's talking about playing style as well or not, but but um, because I I I don't and don't get me wrong, these groups I'm gonna say are good bands in and of their own. They are, but I don't want Indiana Desolate to sound like uh, Evanescence. I don't want us to sound like that band. I don't want us to sound like Simblant, uh, you know, and I'm awful leery about, you know, bringing in uh, two singers for a song, um, especially like a female vocalist for a song. It has to sound right, and if it doesn't sound right for Indiana Desolate, then as far as I'm concerned, I'm not going to use it, because we're establishing a fan base that hopefully like the way we sound and if we were to throw a monkey wrench a left-handed monkey wrench in our sound they'd say what the fuck is this what the hell are you guys thinking why did you fuck up something good and I'm not gonna do that for you know you know just you know I mean if you're going for a different sound what are you gonna do stick the headstock of the guitar up your ass and try for a different sound no you're gonna go with what works and our album, as far as underground scene goes, I I, I I think our first album did quite well. Uh, as far as monetary goes, it did horrible. That album, like I said, has not made $10 today. But what it did is astounding for us not even being a live band. We were on Reverb Nation local heavy metal charts number one quite a few times uh, three or four times we held that spot for a long time matter of fact uh, we were probably on the reverb heavy metal uh, reverb nation heavy metal charts for the cities of Battle Creek Grand Rapids and Kalamazoo and the regional charts we were probably as close to number three or maybe four on the regional charts for us not even playing one live show and mind you some of these other bands were probably really pissed because they had played live in Grand Rapids and we were getting that close with our first album to being number one in the regional so that says to me that you're on to something here you are very much on to something here you can disagree with me all you want, but the fact still remains that we were no, at least number four or number three in the regional, which includes Grand Rapids, which is Michigan's second largest city next to Detroit. Now, you you can you can claim all day long that, that it wasn't a good album, 
you can say what you want to about the production sound, but you know what? I disagree with you. And I, I laid out the proof right there that my disagreement is valid. So put that in your peace pipe and smoke it, buddy. <laughs> but no, seriously, that's why I stand by our work. I, if, if it was no good, if it was horrible, if we sounded like a horrible garage man, I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't be saying none of that. But we're better than that. And that's what I mean when I say we're like the Transformer Devastator. When we're individuals, we're not that awesome. But it's when we come together and form that super robot that we're badass. And that's truly, honestly, what it is with us. When we come together and we harmonize and we gel and we get together, it's like, boom, we create that awesome songs and that ripping heavy metal and, and that's what it's all about right there you know and, and and for us to have accomplished that and it sure you know you can say what you want it's reverb nation but still for local bands in west michigan to be out there playing live and for us an online collaboration band to not even have played one live show and still almost get to number one in the regional charts. Imagine if we did play live local shows. It'd be awesome. So, you guys think about that if you're having doubts. Because, I, like I told Joe, until we become a professional band, which I'm leery of, uh, we're always going to have doubts whether we are good enough. I know together we are good enough. I have no doubt about that we are good enough. Until we become professional and cross over that threshold, then we're always going to have doubts. But you know what? I've heard the horror stories of the, the record executives. And, and, and we have examples. Thank God for Megadeth. Thank God for Dave Mustaine. Because it's like the actions he did after he got out of Capitol Records showed me. It spoke echoes to me. It said... With the album Countdown to Extinction, he didn't even get to release on that album the songs he wanted to release the way he wanted them. Because Capitol pulled the strings. They pulled the, hey, we're going to trump you because you signed a contract. And if we don't want it to go this way, it, it's going to go our way, not your way, Dave Mustaine. And you're, you, you have to do it. So basically, once you sign a record contract... That record company then owns you. They own you. You are under a record contract, which means you have to produce so many records in a period of time. And if you make a song that the producer, which is hired by the record company, doesn't like the way that song is going, they will tell you to change it. You can disagree with them, but it doesn't matter. If they tell you it needs to be this way, then it has to be that way. There's nothing you can do to change that. So in essence, by signing that record contract, you just gave up your artistic values, your artistic creativity of that music to the record company. That's why I don't like signing to record labels. Because they own you then. No thanks. I'd rather be underground and not be a slave to them. And still make great heavy metal music. Fucking A. Alright guys. Hopefully it makes sense. I know it does to me. You know. Hey we ain't going to make a ton of money. We ain't going to make hardly any money. But you know what. It's our passion. And we love doing it. So fucking A we'll do it. You know. And hopefully we'll keep doing it. So. You know what. It's alright. Because it's better to burn out than fade away. You know, so, what was that? Uh, poison? I can't remember. I can't remember who said that, but I, I think it's true. But, all right, guys, this has been a 40 minute video. You guys rock. You guys take care. Rawr, keep the horns up, guys. Yeah, you guys rock. All right, love you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are the best fans in the world. You guys take care. This is Mike Powers of Indiana Desolate signing out. See ya.